So uh, do the brokers have similar difficulty in the states when it comes to the nuclear exclusion and the GL policy wordings? I think the short answer is yes. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, not only brokers, but also insurers and clients and prospects as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think so. There's a variety of, uh, of reasons, too. One of the reasons being the aspect of trying to dovetail the insurance mm -hmm. with your general liability and other insurances. So within these a you know, GL policy or a uh, environmental policy, they're going to have a nuclear exclusion. That nuclear exclusion isn't always the ISO broad form, which we'll discuss in a little bit. And so while you are trying to carve out that specific nuclear risk, the edges matter. If they don't line up uh, seamlessly, then there's a potential for a gap in Gaps. Coverage. And that's something that, that, that um, a, a, as a pool manager, I always worry about the gaps, and I'm sure as a prudent broker, um, uh, prudent brokers always worry about the gaps as well. Um, so can you give us a couple of uh, examples oh. of where the Canadian American exclusions are quite different and why is that? Or you had sure, something else? Yeah, before we go there, I think that it's pretty important to show why there's such confusion um, and why there's a lot of questions about the nuclear exclusion. Mm -hmm. um, in the United States, the ISO version is called the Nuclear Energy Liability Insurance Broad, ex broad Form. <laughs> so number one, people think, oh, it's a broad exclusion, but that is not the case. It's not, the broad form does not refer to the, the expanse of the exclusion. Um, broad form is that when it was created, it was meant to go on a all liability policies that insured business risks broadly. So it didn't matter if you were a ketchup pump yeah. maker or a you know nuclear uh, supplier. You each person still had the same broad form exclusion on their general liability policies. That's misconception number one. Misconception number two is the length of the exclusion. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, they don't want to read all of it. You know, some insurance professionals <laughs> will, will open up and say, oh, wow, that's a long exclusion. It's not covered. No, actually, it's the opposite. The reason why the exclusion is so long is because it was specifically trying to show what was excluded and what was, and covered. What was covered. Exactly. And so that's two big misconceptions. So number three, there's another ex uh, reason why that there's misconceptions, and that is the intertwining definitions. So yes. there are definitions built in the exclusion itself. There are also definitions that refer to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's definitions. Right. Mm -hmm. And then there are some times where the insurance <laughs> policy actually has definitions that's, that are used. So all three of these intertwining definitions really have to be read, and you can't just read the th read the exclusion just in, in one go, right? No. You need to see yeah. all the definitions and how they play out. Um, finally, after you've understood the exclusion, you also need to look in the policy to see if there are other nuclear exclusions that have somehow entered into the policy. Uh, some of these liability policies will not only have the ISO version or the IBC nuclear exclusion, but they might also have another nuclear exclusion that serves to negate the coverage of Mm -hmm. the broad form or the IBC exclusion. And then finally, there's also uh, pollution. Um, a lot, you know, over time, the general liability policies and other liability policies have put in pollution exclusions. These pollution, pollutant can be defined as a radioactive mm -hmm. uh, material or mm -hmm. radioactive irritant or anything. Sometimes it's so broad, so actually the pollution exclusion might apply to a nuclear event. So you've got to look at that as well. And then finally, if you've cleared the policy in the certain scenario you're looking for and your insured is not excluded, its business, its scenario, its nuclear-related material is not excluded by the policy, you still need to make sure that the underwriter and the insurer, the general liability insurer, knows the exposure. And that has been disclosed, yes. mm -hmm. and that their intent is to cover it. Right. So there are a lot of things. That's there's there's a lot of confusion there. A lot of complexities <laughs> in this. Uh, absolutely. For sure.